everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Josie. Today I'm going to discuss communication. And this is on my Josie Cares channel. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that uh, this is a subject that needs to be talked about. And I'm going to start off with professional um, and then the second talk about personal. It's amazing that the skills are pretty much, in most part, a lot alike. Now, I've written a lot of notes, so I will be looking down. You'll have to excuse that because I couldn't memorize it all. But first of all, on the professional, and by the way, if this subject bothers you and you become offended, just don't watch it. I know uh, some of the things I talk about, people don't want to hear. But I feel really strong that if we don't face reality and um, discuss some of these things, we can't change. And we all need improvement. I'm not pointing the finger at anyone. We all need improvements in our everyday life and how we think and how we talk. So, <laughs> excuse me, on the professional <clears throat> way, active listening. It's really important when you go in, say for a job interview or you already have the job and your boss is talking to you or you're in a big meeting, um, you shouldn't be on your phone. You shouldn't be thinking about other things. You should be thinking about what is going on because a lot of times miscommunication is because your mind is somewhere else and you're not paying attention and you're not hearing what someone is actually saying. And now, and I'm not pointing fingers again at people have hearing uh, issues. It doesn't matter if you're young or old, there's a young people who have hearing problems. So, um, active listening is really important. And active listening means paying attention close to who is communicating with by engaging with them, asking questions and rephrasing. Practice active listening can build respect with your coworkers and increase understanding in the workplace. Again, um, Listen closely. I think we have, we all have a habit sometimes. Uh, we think we know what the person is going to say. And I have been in, uh, when I was in the business world, also besides uh, being a retired nurse, I was purchasing supervisor in the hospital. So I know the business side of it. <clears throat> a communication method. Um, and you know, when you communicate, we've kind of dropped the ball here with our emails and our messaging and one-on-one -on -one and on the phone is actually the best thing. You can interpret an email or a message really wrong. And especially if you don't know the person, you know, some people have a sense of humor, but when you're dealing with business, you shouldn't use your sense of humor in an email if you're writing to um, your coworker or your boss. Um, you should be professional. Friendliness. Um, friendliness uh, traits like honesty and kindness can help foster trust and understanding in communication at work. You try to communicate with a positive attitude, keep your mind open, and ask questions. If you have doubts, ask questions. And confidence. Confidence is really important. If you lack confidence in a business surrounding, it shows. And if the person you're communicating with has more confidence, I'll use the layman's language as they're gonna run over you. Um, they can out talk you. 
they can make you very confused and um, you might even say something that is just not appropriate at all. So you need confidence. Sharing feedbacks. Um, you should um, always, uh, in an honest way and, and not a forceful way, but if you like or dislike something, you should comment. Volume and clarity when you're speaking, and this is personal too, be clear and make it audible. Adjust your speaking voice so you can be heard. And my speaking voice, I know, is loud. I have been told it was loud, but the latter part of my nursing career, I worked in a nursing home with a lot of hard of hearing people. And I learned to talk loud and I've never been able to tone it down. And I know my voice is loud. And like I said, I've been told that, and even sometimes in a rude way. Empathy. Empathy is really important. Uh, it's not that you're really <laughs> feeling sorry for someone, but you're, you're understanding their situation. And sometimes in a work uh, position, it, you know, there are, there is drama. There is difficulties on the job and people in, I'm sure now, it's always been, but it seems like there's not the loyalty with companies. My generation and the generation before me, they went to work for a company and they worked the whole career. Respect. Always show respect. I think that's the one that bugs me the most. Um, and when you're speaking, always... Um, allow someone to speak and don't interrupt. Now, I, I have to work on that one. I have a habit sometimes of doing that because something's on my mind and I want to get it off, but that's not a good thing. So we all need to work on allowing everyone to speak without being interrupted. And I feel like that's part of respect. Nonverbal clues. Now, we were even taught this in nursing, and that it's really important in the medical field. When you're uh, talking to a patient or um, trying to do an evaluation, their body language, their eyes, um, their facial expressions, just even how they hold their body. If you really watch, it will tell you something. Um, like a great deal of communication happens through nonverbal clues, such as body language, facial expressions, and eye contact. contact. Uh, so that is part of, I think, the professional. Like I said, it's pretty similar in the personal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in friendships, the lack of communication, biggest reasons for fights or end of friendships. Um, this happens a lot. And I think it happens more nowadays because we are on social media um, we don't use the telephone as often as we should. We're um, sending messages, emails. Uh, listening skills, again. Sometimes you're talking to somebody and they're multitasking. They're doing other things. They don't hear you, but they hear something. And they may hear something completely different and what you actually said. And then they get mad. And it causes hurt feelings, misunderstandings, arguments, and even, like I said, ends friendships. So listening is, I think on both 
personal and business. Listening is probably the most important skill that we can work on and need to acquire. Um, okay, and sometimes friends, they assume you're complaining when you're really, when you really weren't. You're, you can't always be positive. Yes, we should, we should work on that. But life happens. We can't always be positive. And we have to make sure in a friendship that we don't become that narcissist that thinks that we're the most important person. That we don't listen to our friends. We all have problems at one time or another. <clears throat> so that doesn't mean that we should always come first. And I will bring up myself in this, in this uh, statement. If you know me or um, if you ask me a question, I'm honest. I won't tell you. <clears throat> I'm not the politician. I won't tell you what you want to hear. I will tell you an honest answer. If I can't answer your question, I'll tell you I can't answer your question. <coughs> I won't um, let's I won't just say something to appease you. And then I have a motto. Yes, we all at times well I'll use the word gossip. It's not a really good word. I won't gossip because I won't say anything behind your back that I wouldn't say to your face. But that personality, like mine, sometimes offends people. They don't want to always hear an honest answer. Okay, now I get out of the personal thing, but I just wanted to, I don't mind using myself for an example. Because I don't think that we can change unless we face reality. And I think that is the hardest thing. I find that so many people um, don't want reality. They want to live in a fantasy world. And I'm not that way just because <clears throat> I'm old. I've always been that way. I have a harder time. Um, I have an easier time facing reality. And then if the negative doesn't happen, I'm thrilled. When you're too positive and then the negative happens, you fall apart. Okay, get off of me. <laughs> um, learn to be assertive. It's really important to be assertive in professional and personal. Now in professional, your assertiveness, you do have to be a little super careful because if you have a boss above you, <clears throat> don't be so assertive that you're telling your boss what to do because you won't keep a job for very long. So um, instead of um, waiting until things get easier, if there's a problem, instead of hoping and waiting that it gets easier, or it's just going to go away. Actually, in most cases, it gets worse. And if you, with confidence, state your opinion. Even if you know your friend is going to disagree with you. Because if you honestly, with respect, state your opinion and clear the air, you're going to have a better chance <clears throat> in um, keeping that friendship. But if you just um, let it go and think it's going to go away, problems never just go away by themselves. They just grow bigger. Always remember, stay calm. One of the worst things 
And I'm sure that everyone listening to this has this problem. Somebody makes you angry and you just either start cussing, you say things that you wouldn't say if you waited, say, 24 hours and calmed down. You'll use language that you shouldn't be using. And again, that we're human. And that is one of the things that is really hard. So in all the research that I've done and plus personal life and just living, most of the advice they give is wait 24 hours. And it's never as bad the next day as it was today. So, and I'm going to sum up what I have researched, how I feel, is the main thing, honesty, respect, integrity, listening skills, good listening skills. <clears throat> Don't be talking on the phone and... Um, on the internet at the same time. You're not listening. You're watching something. You could be shopping. You could be playing a game. And we've all done that. We're all guilty of that. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies. It's just, I cleaned off my patio today and there was lots of dust. So, excuse my coffee. Anyway, um, I hope this helped a little bit. I didn't do this video because um, it was all personal. I had somebody, um, a couple of requests for something like this. I think we all need to kind of um, sit back and look at ourselves and think now, am I, good? am I a good friend? Am I a good listener? How do I relate to people? Um, do I say exactly what they want to hear? And that's not, that's not true friendship. If you have to keep a friendship because you just appease them all the time and you always agree with them and you say what they want to hear and they become the most um, dominant part of the friendship, that's not true friends. And so let's work on our skills just a little bit. And like I said, I work on mine because I'm far from being perfect. So I'm gonna close this. Like I said, if you're taking it personal and I've offended you, um, sorry about that. You don't have to watch my video. And um, if you give me a thumbs down, that's fine too. Um, I usually just uh, go in and uh, don't show them so uh, I just this channel is based on discussions like this I will get requests for certain subjects and I don't try to impress anyone I do research and sometimes, yes, I do bring my personal feelings in. It's kind of hard not to. Anyway, have a great day. Be safe. And see you soon, everyone. Bye.